What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. This is Hawk Talk on Melrose following Iowa's dominant performance yesterday, 22 to 0. The most all around complete game of the year for Iowa. Uh, complimentary football. It was the best that you could even think of. And uh, got Tyler here today. I want to start off just by saying this watching Iowa's, and I'm talking the offense here was exactly the offense that we have always asked for. Doesn't have to be great, just average. And yesterday, that's exactly what it was. It was nothing special, but it was good enough to where that happens. And most games are going to be like that with our defense. Can we just continue to do that? And we, we've been asking that for years. We've always, we, we never ask for much. We just ask for an average offense. And that's exactly what was delivered yesterday. So um, just... All around great performance and and very happy today. And uh, let's let's have a good podcast. What's going on, man? Man, I don't know. Did you did you peek a peek at my notes before we started this? Because I might have. You literally said the two things that I was going to say. Kirk always talks about complimentary football, and we kind of get annoyed on here because you know complimentary football is all three phases. Everyone's got to do their job, and we have always felt like the offense has not obviously done that. And until yesterday, we finally saw them do and what I was about to say that you stole again was they finally did enough where it was dominant performance right 22 to nothing um and that's what we've been asking for all year is them to just do enough to not put our defense in such precarious situations where it feels like they have to do everything where it feels like man if they give up three or seven it's it could go, it could, we could lose type of feeling. And, and yesterday, yeah. I mean, you know, the first half was obviously close, but um, it really felt too, like, I don't know about you, but it really felt like we actually made some second half adjustments where we kind of, and, and maybe it was before the end of half where I know we, we turned it over, but we actually were aggressive. We actually wanted to actually score a touchdown yeah. in, in a minute 23 um, when we got the ball back. So I don't know, it just, it, it felt amazing it felt like i didn't have to like be super stressed out for four quarters of football yesterday let's uh start with the defense first we always start with the offense because it's always bad and it's like um but and it seems like we never really get into which we do but it's very because we just kind of forget about it how good this defense actually is we went into the season thinking that there was going to be a drop off from last year rightfully so you lose your best linebacker ever and jack campbell and some other players but man, like this is this defense is getting really close to last year's standards. And yesterday, Rutgers, the furthest it got was to Iowa's 42 yard line. And then I actually wrote this down because this is absolutely incredible. In the second half, the first drive of the second half, they had seven plays for 25 yards. After that drive, they had five more drives the rest of the game, four punts, one interception in those five drives. 13 plays minus 15 yards in those five drives minus 15 yards. That's absolutely incredible. Ended with 20 plays for 10 yards in the second half. Like that's pure dominance. And you know, before people say, well, it's because his records offense is, is really bad. And and I get it. It's not, it's not the best offense out there, but their rushing attack, their running back was leading the big 10 in rushing going into this game. He finished 13 carries for 39 yards. We made their quarterback look so uncomfortable. You knew an interception was going to bound to happen because yeah, he just yeah. looked so uncomfortable back there. And we we just we just dominated. And a lot of it had to do with the offense, which we'll be talking about here shortly because I want to hear your thoughts on the defense. But it, it, a lot of it had to do with the offense actually sustaining some drives, giving our defense some rest, and making Rutgers' offense have to always go back out there. Or the defense always go back out there for Rutgers. And, then, you know, and then it helped our offense, but then it helped our defense – Take some breaks. They're not out there the entire game. Go back to the Penn State game. Why do our defense look the way it did? It wasn't because our defense was bad and Penn State's offense was just that much better than our defense. No, it's because our, our defense was out there the entire freaking game. You're going to get tired when you – what? how many plays did Penn State run again? Like 90-some plays against our defense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to break down. You're going to wear down. <laughs> so – Going back to if our offense is just average and like if we can build off this moving forward, it's only going to make our defense look like it did last night, um, right. just elite levels. So, um, yeah, credit goes to that. Yep, yep. And I think 
this is that, like I said, this is that game where you you just read the stats off where it, it resembled a little bit of last year or, or even years prior where, you know, they're they're so dominant and they have been all year. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, we've seen some drives given up. Right. You know, some long drives that end in a touchdown or a big play here or there. And, and you're right. It's when you're on the field. Seventy five to twenty five percent defense compared to offense, it's going to happen. Guys get tired. There's more likely of a chance to have a breakdown on defense when you're out there way more than that. So I think you're exactly right. The offense did their job and did more than what, you know, they probably needed to yesterday, which only benefited our defense and allowed them to, to essentially play to their potential. And that's what any, like that's complimentary football. When, when defense helps the offense out and offense helps the defense out and same with special teams, it's, it's 22 to nothing. That's the, that's going to be the result, especially for Iowa. Yep. Uh, three things. Number one, our linebackers are, are so good. Jay Higgins, Nick Jackson lead uh, the defense yesterday in tackles. Uh, Nick Jackson had a sack. So glad we picked him up. I knew he was going to be such an underrated get for us. I think everyone kind of forgot about him going into the season because of the yeah. offensive transfers, but it's like, dude, this guy's going to be really good for us. And started out kind of shaky against Utah uh, state. I mean, his assignment that day was, was not good. He had to be way on the outside. So I, I said, you know, just give it time. He's going to be really good for us. And it's starting to show like he's, he's a dog. And so is Jay Higgins. I thought a better game out of Jamari Harris. Uh, you you take away that one catch that they had, they kept picking on Jamari. And I thought he, overall a much better performance by him. Obviously he's been struggling as of late. So that was good to see. Yeah. And then the third thing, man, the crowd yesterday was incredible. Five false starts. And it wasn't because, you know, they were just having these false starts. It's because of the crowd. It was so yeah. loud for a, a, a November game where, you know, rightfully so, but like, you know, you look around the Big Ten, a lot of these teams, they can't even fill the stadium like halfway. And just credit goes out to our crowd for not only showing up, it was full house yeah. yesterday, but being loud and it definitely helped. I mean, five fall starts, yeah, you're. it's going to be tough to put up points against our defense when that happens. Yeah, after the game, we were we we're kind of listening to just uh, kind of the post game reaction, um, and they were talking about to Greg Schiano, and he actually credited our crowd as well. He said that's the reason. He's like, there's it. This didn't just. I mean, we we try to simulate it this week in practice by pumping crowd noise in, but I mean, it's, you can't simulate you can't simulate that that much crowd noise. And and he did. He 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 said it. It was Iowa's crowd. They affected us, and essentially put them in those situations where they were not going to be successful because they, they, they're, they're, they're like you mentioned, their offense isn't great where they can't afford third, like second, third and longs like that. Yeah. So um, yeah, credit, like and, you said, credit goes out to our crowd in, in, in a November game. It was actually for a November game, very nice weather compared to what it could have been. And and everyone did come, come out and show, you know, show up and show out. So they're, their false starts too came at really good timings because it was like third and ones, fourth yeah. and ones they were, where they were, you yep. know, either going to get it or like you said, a fourth and one where they probably were going for it. And yeah. So switching to the offense now, I will spend the rest of the time talking about this offense. Finally, just leaving the stadium feeling somewhat good about the offense. Um, time of possession yesterday, 38 minutes to Rutgers 21. I mean, that is yeah. really good. You don't see that very often with Iowa. So you look at the first half, so I'm going to break it up by half because it was essentially kind of two different games in one game. You know, the first half wasn't bad. We we had 40 plays, 194 yards. The problem was we only had three points out of it. It could have been a little bit better. You know, obviously the interception by Deacon Hill, like you just can't let that happen. I mean, that was just a bad throw. Yeah. I don't even know why he threw that. It was just bad and only giving, you know, getting three points. And that goes back to what, what I said at the beginning of the podcast where it's like, this offense yesterday wasn't great, but it was average. It was good. And, and a little bit had to do with like the offense, the first half, which is just kind of shaky, but still put up almost 200 yards. It was the second half. That was very telling 41 plays, 218 yards, 19 points. There was a, a span in there in the, that I, that I recorded that I looked up started. The, it was like middle of the third quarter up until about 10 minutes left in the fourth. We had three drives where he had five plays, 54 yards, 
nine plays, 54 yards, 12 plays, 44 yards. And we've scored on all three. We had a touchdown and then two field goals. And then actually the drive after that was uh Quinn Schulte's interception, which set up for a nine yard touchdown. So that's all we ask. I mean, that was, that's as good as you can get with this, with this offense. I mean, yeah. we already know how limited this offense is given the injuries and just given who we are. So we do those type of things. Like, yeah, we're, we're going to do decent. Now, when you play like the big boys, you gotta it's it, you have to be even better than this, but you can get right. by this type of style against a lot of teams. Yeah, and I mean the the thing that I think I told you after the game, I was looking on Twitter, and the stat that just shocked me. And it doesn't matter if you know we have a good game or not offensively, to not have any three and outs during the game. For incredible I, for Iowa is I don't even I didn't even believe that stat. I don't know your thoughts on that. Crazy. Yeah, I mean it it is because with how bad our offense is, yeah. you know, when you really think about where I mean we are ranked like we are the worst offense in college football. I mean, you look at all the statistics and we're like dead last in almost every single category. To not have a three and out, I mean, is absolutely incredible, especially given a lot of those drives. For the most part, I'm not just talking yesterday, but just in general, there's a lot of drives where we get backed up. Yes. But a lot of it had to also do we had zero penalties, which is yeah. awesome. incredible. Like, yeah. no holding calls, not a false start, <laughs> like nothing. And usually when we have a penalty on an offensive drive, we are That's going bad. to have to punt the football. Yeah. So, yeah, That's I'm glad you point. brought that up because I had it written down here, but I, I totally skipped that. Yeah, it, that's an incredible thing. Like I said, we were sustained drives. Now, and, yes, or well, I was gonna say, and I, and I don't want to sit here and be like, you know, oh, it's because of Ru- it's because it's Rutgers that you guys didn't have any three and out. Like their defense actually isn't bad. No, we we just like you said, no penalties, and I actually like you can you can argue Brian had a good day of, of play calling. He really mixed it up. And the different sort of things that he did, he did a he did a decent amount of play action, which we've been calling for, which is what led to that for that huge play, yeah, um, to the tight end. And he he did some jet motions. He got Caleb Brown finally involved. Like, dude, it's been so we've been talking about it for so long. Caleb Brown gets his first touchdown as an Iowa Hawkeye. Let alone his first catch, he actually was involved in our offense, especially like you said in the second half and re- like. And give credit to Brian because you know that's obviously him there yep. drawing that up for him. So, yeah, I actually, I had both of those written down here that I was going to talk about. I thought we'll, we'll start with Brian Ferentz first. Yeah, um, I think there's just that sense, and I and I said this at the like two weeks ago, like maybe moving forward now that we know what the outcome is going to be, maybe everybody plays a little bit more loose. Yeah, and you can almost kind of see that even with like Brian Ferentz's play calling, like just he knows like this is kind of the final ride, so. There's no yeah. pressure. There's and, no pressure to like, like quote unquote, screw it up. Right. Yes. And so you can just kind of tell that everything's just becoming a little bit more like there's the weights kind of lifted off the shoulders a little bit. That's a good point. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I thought he had a great day. There was a few play calls that yeah. were just head scratching, but you're just going to get, I mean, it's just expected with Brian. You're, you're just going to get that every single game. It just doesn't matter. Uh, but then, yeah, going to Caleb Brown, man, like, Absolutely, like we need to keep getting him involved. So yesterday he finished with uh, three catches for what was it, um, twenty-seven yards, one touchdown. He also had two rushing uh, plays for twenty yards. So he averaged ten yeah. yards on those two rushing, those like jet, jet sweep motions. And then not only that, but like obviously we're in the stadium, we can kind of see it more than or better than on TV. But there was a few times where like he was drawing double teams that got Nico the ball. Right, Nico was wide open because they were. On more of an Cam- underneath route because kind of Caleb was more that deeper route and, and the safety would kind of travel with him. And it kind of left, like you said, Nico yep. one-on-one. So hundred percent, he opens everything up. And when you have yeah. someone that you actually have to respect in the passing game, that's what's going to allow us to actually, like you said, not even, not even just like get Caleb involved, but get this offense involved, get this offense going. Exactly. I, I hate saying this because I, I never want to see injuries, but having Deontay Vines out yesterday, I shouldn't say it with like a blessing in disguise, but like it finally gave Caleb the opportunity to play the entire game. He started and he was probably out there 
almost every single play. Like I don't really recall many plays where he wasn't out there. Yeah. And and I just think moving forward, man, like he's he's better than Vines. And and I, I don't think Vines is a bad receiver, but I just think Caleb Brown has more upside. I think defenses right. have to respect Caleb Brown a lot more than they would Devontae Vines. And it's almost like no coincidence that the first game that Caleb Brown kind of plays a lot of the game, like our offense looks decent. And actually scores. Yeah. 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 So no, I, I think you're exactly right. He I, I just think moving forward, we, we only have, well, hopefully four games, two more regular season games, Big Ten Championship game, and the bowl game. Caleb Brown needs to start. I it just everything I yeah. saw yesterday, and that doesn't even we're not even talking about the two-point conversion. I mean, he, you know, he scored yeah, on that two-point conversion, you know, that helps as well. So yep. um yeah, I just think that like even when he doesn't get the ball, he is um heavily focused. The defense is heavily focused on him because of his playmaking. And with him, you can do so many things with him because he's so good in open space. Like you saw that on that touchdown. I mean, go back and watch that replay. Yeah. He shouldn't have scored there if you think about it. I mean, there was he missed, I mean, there was like three or four missed tackles. Yeah. But he was determined to get in the, the touchdown. And you just kind of almost figured that he was gonna get there because he was so determined. But that's also just he's really good at running the football. I mean, he used to be a running back back in high school, so he, he knows what it takes. So just yeah. getting him involved in those things, it's great. Getting him involved in receiver screens, jet motions. But then I know we even threw the ball downfield to him, which he actually beat his man. It was just a bad pass by Deacon. So yeah. I just hope we see a lot more of Caleb Brown. And I also think, and I, I was talking to Colby this morning, my brother, and he just thinks like if we can continue to kind of get Brown the ball more, like I don't think he leaves after this year. I don't think yeah. he does. And that is like, if you're talking like trying to keep some of these guys for next year, yeah. that's what you do. You, you, you kind of, you end things in a positive and good way. And if you keep getting Caleb Brown involved, it doesn't really matter what the first eight or nine games looked like. If the last four or five, he's doing really good for us. Like, yeah, why? I mean, yeah, you might as well stay. Right. So, cause right. I think that's like, like number one priority going in next year is making sure you keep, you keep Caleb Brown. Like I, that's like my yeah. number one priority. Yeah, You're going to bring back Luke Lachey, maybe Eric all, I don't know. But make sure you keep Caleb Browns. And I think if you can get him involved, get him touches, maybe a couple more touchdowns, I think he stays. Um, yeah, that, that real quick and that and just like, I mean, I think we always say the run game should help open up the pass game, but it's almost like a reverse because defenses are always so focused on our run game. Where yeah. It's like, yeah, now you see like you get Caleb involved and we had what three backs go for 50 plus 50 yards, which is you know, really good to see. We actually had a really good rushing attack yesterday, a consistent one um, that, you know, led to, you know, us moving the ball down the field and not having a lot of three and outs. So I think then I think Caleb had a lot to do with that. So um, people actually had to respect our pass game a little bit yesterday. And, you know, you saw the kind of the results of that. So. And then one last thing, I just want to talk about Deacon Hill, because obviously we, we criticize him a lot. Rightfully so. I mean, I still don't think he's a great quarterback, but I thought yesterday was his best performance of the year. Best performance yeah. in Iowa uniform by far 20 for 31, 223 yards, 7.2 average, one touchdown, one interception. You take away that interception. It would have been way better, but it still was good. He had a stretch there, which I didn't realize this. I was reading something where he had a stretch of eight straight completions. I, I, I mean, I'll take that. And credit yeah. goes to my dad for saying this. This wasn't me thinking this. He actually said this on the drive home, which, and he made a great point. What Deacon Hill does extremely well is he is really good at selling the fake. And on play action passes, that's kind of the reason why like we've been very efficient on play action with Deacon is he's really good at selling the fake. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really think about that until like I actually like, oh yeah, you know, he actually does do a really good job at that. And yeah, so ball handling is actually like it's it's really good. Like yeah. like carrying out that fake for sure. Yep. Yep. And so like that, you know, like I said, this final stretch here, three or four games, hopefully four games, got to, you got to build off that. You got to continue with that. And then offensive yeah. line, given all the injuries, man, like yeah. probably the best performance by the O line yesterday uh, by far. And um, I, I don't even think I saw Logan Jones, like he started the game, but he didn't even finish the game. We had a backup center in there. And I thought the O line played extremely well yesterday. I mean, Rutgers was doing what, every defense has kind of done against Iowa. Yeah. They were putting like eight, nine guys in the box. The only thing I noticed that Rutgers did that <laughs> most teams or Rutgers didn't do that. Most teams do is they didn't really blitz a lot, which I was kind of surprised by that, but 
minus that, they kind of did, any, you know, the load in the box and yeah. we were still be able to do what was needed. So, yeah, my real quick on Deacon, because, yeah, we kind of we bash him on here. And, and, you know, I think everyone does for for his performances so far. But yesterday, yeah, like you said, for throwing the ball 31 times and for 31 pass attempts, the guy completes like 60, 65 percent of his passes. That is good enough to win you most yeah. games for Iowa. Yeah. I, I I firmly believe that. So I'm not saying that this is like, I don't want to sit up here and be like, well, this is what I'm going to expect every game out of him now, because, you know, it, it, I, I think that's unrealistic. But I like you said, I think there's a lot of things that we did last week that I, I hope we can continue to build upon, which is, like you said, getting Caleb Brown the ball in a variety of different ways. Like you mentioned, he's his lonely touchdown, his one and only touchdown came off of a of a receiver screen that he's athletic enough to make three guys miss and, and get into the end zone without being tackled. And you know, he I show like I told you after the after that touchdown, he kind of pointed to his wrist, like, you know, it's about damn time. And and yep. I feel like, like you said, I feel like if, if we continue to get him more involved, hopefully that leads to him, yeah, like you said, staying and and us continuing to you know get better on offense. Yeah, we were in in going back to Brian Ferentz and play calling. Like Brian did, like Brian knows Hill has a lot of limitations. So what do you do? Yeah, yeah. you do those type of things to receivers. And this is where I get mad when it's like a lot of times it's like to Nico or like it's just like no, like do it to receivers that are playmakers. And we finally like with Caleb Brown, we did that yesterday. Yeah. So moving forward. And obviously, we'll have a podcast later this week going over the Illinois game. I just hope that we can build off this second half performance, right? We can carry this into the Illinois game, into the rest of the season. Yeah. Um, it's hard to believe, but we win next week. We clinch the Big Ten West, even yep. if we lose against Nebraska, yep. which I don't want to. Um, I did not I'd rather realize be in that situation, right? Yeah. I'd rather be in that situation where that Nebraska game, I don't like last year. It's kind of like, well, you're in it, you're winning, you're in type of thing. So. Yep. Um, this is kind of a sneak preview to the, to the Nebraska game, but I did not realize that. So Nebraska played three quarterbacks yesterday. They played obviously, uh, Jeff Sims, that Very Heinrich, nice. and then some other guy, all three quarterbacks threw an interception and Sims actually had two. So they finished with four interceptions. I don't know how that offense is going to be able to score or even do anything against our defense. Like, seriously, like, I, I, I don't know, like you, how? Well, and, that is like, is it the only is the only way they're going to score is if we clinch the West next week and we're just kind of like, eh, about the Nebraska game. Like, but I don't think we will because it's a rivalry game and we exactly. I was just going to say, I don't think even so, if we, yeah, especially after last year, like losing to them, right? Like, right, that's a good I'd, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be up. We'll we'll be very highly motivated for that game, even if it is in Lincoln. So, um, that's a good point. Yeah, I dude, their quarterback situation is not good either. So, yeah. Yeah, their entire offense is, is similar to ours. A lot of injuries, just very bad. Their defense is obviously defense, but yeah. really good defense, yeah. I just don't know how they're going to be able to do anything against our defense. I, I really don't. Hey, well, even with preview sneak preview to Illinois, it seems like Illinois has been able to put up some points lately. But, again, they haven't, I don't think, faced a defense quite like ours. So Yeah, so, God, who said that? Someone said that on sound off last night. They're like, you know, I watched a little bit of the Illinois game. And he's like, it's just that's just what's so unique about football because you watch Illinois versus Indiana and what Illinois can do against Indiana, and it's going to be completely different next week against Iowa. It is. And like, you know, because they're not going to be able to do certain things that they did against Indiana because they just well, it's Iowa's Rutgers, defense. And I, and Ohio State has a really good defense this year, but like Rutgers had nine to seven lead over Ohio State against Ohio State just a week ago. Yeah. So. Yeah, it is crazy, like, dude, and that's where, like you said, our defense man just does not get enough credit for what they do. Once again, prime example of us scoring 22 points and it still hits the under because our defense doesn't allow any points. It is it is crazy how good they are yep. and how good Phil Parker actually is as a freaking it's, defensive mind. He is the it's, GOAT. It's what I texted yet last week, and it's like a bump to that. Of yes. Everybody talks yes. shit about the unders with Iowa because of the offense, rightfully so. But can you give the defense a little bit of credit to yes. that? Because like yesterday, yesterday was that perfect example, example. of it yep. should have hit the over. Yeah, because most so teams good. yes are going to put up seven, at least a touchdown. Points, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that that was you kind of called it. That was that was that was a perfect uh, perfect example yesterday. 
But yeah, next week it's going to be a tough game. I mean, Brett Bielma, once again, like, and we'll talk about this on Wednesday night's podcast for Thursday. Like, Brett yeah. Bielma, like, loves, yeah. like, I just, you know, it's kind of like Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern, just has it out for Iowa, right? Like, yeah. and uh, he's, he's done pretty good against Iowa, even going back to the Wisconsin days. Obviously, they won last week or last year, excuse me, nine to six. Two years ago, remember, he didn't coach that game because he had COVID. But remember, like, how we struggled? Like, it, it took. Was- it took cool. until that kick return by Charlie yep. Jones to get things going that game. Yeah. So it's going to be a tough one in Illinois. Like I joked about this last week. I wish we were playing them at the beginning of the year when they were horrible. They've, they finally have kind of found, found their stride a little bit. Yeah. Um. So it's going to be a tough game. It's, it's going to be like, we got to play like we did yesterday. If we play like we did again, like yesterday, defensively Correct. and offensively. Yeah. We should win. Sure, no doubt. Handle. But can our offense just be consistent? And that's what, that's like what I'm scared about is like, it was, that was a one game wonder. I, hopefully it wasn't, well, hopefully we can build off of it. And we've seen it now with Illinois defense, giving up quite a bit of points. It's like, we should have opportunities on offense to score, to be aggressive. Yep. I'm not saying we have to put up 40 points. We should be able to be aggressive enough to get hopefully to that 20 mark or something like that, you know? Yeah. So, and we're not, yesterday was our last home game. So we won't actually be there. When we'll talk about it, but we won't be there for that Illinois game. So it's crazy. That yeah, sucks. Better, season, better sweet that um it's yeah. over for for home games. Yeah. Um, one last thing I do want to touch to with like this team is like you could just tell like how like united they are and just like I you could just tell with like you know Kirk getting emotional yesterday. I think this team is all yeah, in. That's a good point. Um yep. they're playing for each other, they're playing for Kirk. Like, yep. um, I think the bond is great. I Kirk said in his in his presser, he's like um, this is one of my, or he's like, I don't, I don't pick favorites when it terms of like picking what his favorite teams are, you know, in this past, how many 25 years, but he's like, but he's like, but this year, but this year's team is definitely up there in which it's like, I think he, he had like, this team is special and given all the injuries, given everything that's happened. And uh, especially with the whole Brian Ferris situation and the team hasn't folded credit to Kirk. I mean, that's one thing Kirk, he's just such a good leader. I mean, there's so many times throughout the years where it's like, God, like 2020 when, you know, that whole racial thing. And then we start 0-2. It's like that team could have easily folded. And we ended up winning six straight to finish off the year. So give credit. I mean, the Penn State game this year, you know, after that blowout, things were looking so bad. And team doesn't fold. And so... Credit to Kurt for that. That or that the interview at uh, after the game when he's getting emotional and even like in the press conference stuff like that's why I love Kirk because like you said he he really like he cares so much about the guys and yep he doesn't I mean like I don't think he sits up there and wishes our offense to be dead last right like that's not I I don't believe that I just think like he he does he truly cares about them and like that's why he is a hell of a coach and why he's yep. been there for so long. The reason why I get mad at him, it's it's a stubbornness. And and I've said, and I yeah. said this for from day one, like like whenever we talk about like next year, I say, you know, if he's willing to change, like that's what I would love to keep Kirk. Like, I don't hate Kirk. I don't want to say, oh, I, I still want to get no, I would like right. love like that's my first like thing is keep Kirk. Yeah. If he's like willing to change what some of the stuff is. Yeah. Um, and once again, like and yesterday showed that if you get an offensive court, like even if you want want to kind of run the same type of offense in a way, but kind of modernize it a little bit, like yes. it's an effective offense. But you got to have a good offensive play call, and you got to have just a more let them updated kind of do their system. Thing. Yes. Yeah, and let them do their thing. Like, yep. Don't get too involved where it's like we're we're limiting ourselves. We're being so conservative where it's like we're playing not to lose. Yesterday, yep. it really felt like we were playing to win that game. So, yep. we don't need to be. Oh, some really? spread team um, or an air raid. I mean, look at freaking Wisconsin right now, losing 24 to three against Wisconsin yeah. or against Northwestern. Um, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can keep this type of style of offense, but just modernize it, make right. it like the NFL. A lot of those NFL teams that run the pro style, but it's more of an updated version. Yeah. That's what needs to happen. So, yeah, but yeah, I think that will do it. Good I think pod, overall, man. Hey, wait, wait, God damn time we were positive on this episode or on the on this this Iowa team right yeah like no it, kidding it, it, it it's really, been a while right it's been a while so it felt felt good yesterday to for us anyway as, as our last game in Kinnick this year to kind of go out with a 
with a bang essentially felt yep. really good well it was like the first game actually leaving the stadium now you could go back to maybe the western michigan game um you know we won like 40 to something that felt like a good game but like whenever you know those western are non-conference michigan. games yes yeah. um but like okay michigan state yes we won but that was like when Cade got hurt so like you kind of walk out of the stadium not feeling very good the well, purdue game like cooper de Jean, like part return during that game to like win too it's like, yep purdue game yeah. it was like you know Remember we let Purdue come oh, back yeah. like offensively, not very good. So you didn't you walked out of that game like, eh, you know, it's a Lincoln win. Did bad. <laughs> yep. Uh, Minnesota obviously horrible just from that that one call. So like yeah. yesterday was like the first game like leaving Kinnick feeling wow, like I feel really good. Like I feel like it really felt good about like things. a win. Like it yes. it did. It felt like a, a total team win, and it 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 kind of. I don't know about you, but kind of like gives me hope that I I know now where we can get to with this offense a little bit. And I'm not like I'm not saying we're we're gonna look put up 400 yards of offense every game go, going forward, but like I just I know what we can do with what we have. Exactly. So, yeah. When you have the foundation in peace with the with the running backs, with yeah. guys like Caleb Brown, right? And if Deacon right. just can get them the ball, yep. if he doesn't turn Make it, it over for him, yeah. But the problem is he's, he has to turn over he every game. Turnover machine. He has to. He, he, and he, he just has to. Um, but if he can go a game without turning the ball over, man, like we are in great shape. It hasn't happened yet. But if he can, if he can have that one game where he doesn't, we're in awesome shape. That's true. Or if it does happen, let's let's have it happen where like right at the end, like for example, where it happened like yesterday where Rutgers couldn't take advantage of it, right? Because it was halftime. True, true. So if it's going to happen, let it happen around there. Don't let it happen where like if they get the ball back, they're already in like field goal range, right? Like the Minnesota game. I will say that 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 when he did throw it, it looked like he the Rutgers guy. Thank God he kind of fell down, but like if he would have timed it better, like he could have had a, a running a start pick six. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. and I watched the replay. I, he could have. He kind of tripped on himself. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. So but that was just like a bad. Could, yeah, it was just a bad play. I you could you could blame you blame mostly on him. You can maybe blame a little bit on like Brian's like why like that route. Right. It's like eh, what are we doing here? There had to be something and, else and, we could do. I will say, and like something we don't talk about a lot on here, and like I do, I do agree with Kirk. It's like he is not experienced. Like, so there's going to be a bit of a learning curve for him. Yes. You know? And that's why I have to remind myself of that too. It's like he never played at Wisconsin. He was no. going to transfer to Fordham and he never obviously played there. And, and so now he's thrown into this situation with all the injuries, yep. blah, blah, blah. And he so wasn't expected to play this year until the injuries. Right. I got to remind myself a little bit of that too. Yeah. But yeah, give it a lot of credit to the offense and as a whole, and and like you said, our defense continuing to be dominant. I mean, it's this it's is good here. These last couple of games, so very random. I'm going back to that drive where he threw that interception. So I think the play before that, where Caleb Brown had that that uh, jet sweep, did he, was that not a horse collar? Call, like I'm almost positive that Rutgers defender took him down. Unless he grab, I mean, I don't know what a, I thought. A horse collar is you have to get inside. Unless it almost, I know, I, like, I would have to watch the replay. I don't, I don't know because like, you call that. I think we get the ball like the one. I mean, it'd be like a uh, what, well, like or half, half the distance. It might be half the distance. It might be at like yeah. the five yard line, so or wherever that was. But yeah, I yeah that I thought that should have been called. We all did, but again, yep. I'd have to really examine it. But so we 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 won twenty two zero. But you take away okay with a missed field goal at the beginning of the game. The two point conversion, yeah. so that's five yeah. points. Um, either a field goal or a touchdown before half. Yeah. So that's like you know either minimum eight. To, yeah, minimum eight. Yeah. And then if we don't kneel at the end of the game, let's say we put it's, up another touchdown or field goal, like we could have won this game in the thirties. Uh, it could have been like a thirty-five to zero type performance. Which yes, I mean, I'm still really happy. You know the way it turned out, but like man, like we were that close for you know yeah. it to be in that score. So it's true. Can't complain. Can't complain no. at all. So nope. we are leading the Big Ten West, which isn't saying much because the Big Ten West sucks. But we we are now, like I said, like we are two games ahead of everybody. We are just we're doing yeah. what we need to be done, right? And we're taking advantage yeah. of the horrible Big Ten West. And um, this is why we said, man, we got this is the year. Like if you yeah. like, this is the year you got to take advantage. It's only going to get much harder going into the into the future with these new teams coming in. So. Yep. You know, and I still don't get how here. saw some people on Twitter. I don't get how Iowa fans, some Iowa fans don't want to make it to the big 10 championship game. It's like, Oh my God. Like, yes, we probably won't, will get blown out, but that's a whole point of like, you're never going to win it. If you don't go at least, I mean, at least you have that chance. You just never know, you know, maybe you catch them on the wrong night. Maybe you, right. maybe that's you the best know. play game of the year, you know? So 
Why would you like, not want to go? It's like, like it, and like people think it's like out of the realm of possibility. It's like, well, we've played Ohio State and we won, put up 50 points against them. Like nobody ever thought that was going to happen that day in Kinnick where we yeah. from the jump got a pick six and put up 50 points. So you just never know. And like, that's like what sports is about. Like you want to get to the, the top. Like, yeah, I don't know. That, that's a weird. Hypothetically, let's say we do matter. make it, which we should at this point. Um, right, right. Unless we don't just completely shit the bed. But let's say we yeah. do make it. Would you rather play Michigan or Ohio State? I think Penn State's out, obviously, with the loss. Ohio State or Michigan? Uh, I don't know. Because I've, I've seen what Michigan has done to us in the past. Um, I don't feel like Ohio State's as good this year. But it's like I feel like we match up better with Michigan. That's a hard question. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, Jim Harbaugh gets to coach that game then, right? I think so. I would probably say Ohio State. That's kind of where I'm at. I don't you know. Their offense doesn't scare me as much as it has in the past. Now their defense is really good. But I just feel like their games, especially like you've seen it, they're more slugfest type of games where as opposed to like them putting up just monster numbers, you know, offensively. So – I kind of agree with you, and and their quarterback isn't as talented as what they've had in the past either. Yep, I would say I would lean Ohio State. Yeah, you like look at like like Ohio State, like Rutgers. You take away that pick six, they win that game twenty eight to sixteen. Yes, and at that point, like that pick six happened. Like if Rutgers scores on that drive, they're up sixteen to seven. The Wisconsin yeah. game, they won twenty four to ten. Uh, Maryland thirty seven seventeen. Indiana twenty three three. So like. And a lot of I would, the second halves of their, you know, that like it's been closer in the first half. First half, too. yeah. So I would first. definitely take – I would probably rather play Ohio State given at this point. Now, you're, you're obviously your game plan would be like you've got to start uh, – stop Marvin Harrison, take him out of the game, yeah. make someone else beat you. Yep. Um, and that's and been think, hard to do because he's yes. had some monster games here as of late too. I think with Ohio State too, another reason why is I think – their rushing attack isn't as good this year. And I think given our defense, like we'd be able to at least we would be, I feel like we'd be able to make Ohio state one dimensional where like they wouldn't be able to really run the ball very much effectively. Mm-hmm. So they would have be forced to throw. I don't know. I just think I'd rather play them than Michigan. I think Michigan yeah. is to the point where it's like Michigan versus the world, given all yeah. this stuff. And they're just, I think they have extra motivation. They're out for, yep. and you're seeing it. They play. Yeah. Yep. And like you said, you know, we've played Michigan now a couple times the last couple of years yeah. and we've seen the outcome. What makes us think it's going to be any different? So yeah. why not try it with a different team and just and see what happens? Out. Penn State's out of it after that. This yeah, point, they're out right? of it. Which, you know, I like at the beginning of the year, I kind of predicted Penn State to have a good chance. And I thought I thought they'd at least get one of the two teams. But yeah, their Penn State, man, struggled too. I, I, being a Penn State fan, I would be so just fed up with how James Franklin just cannot get it done against top. Against, yep. It's it's honestly remarkable it's how well bad they are. Yes. That's like yeah, that's not a good I mean, if you're if and Penn State's got a lot of expectations, I mean, as a football program. So yeah, I it's curious, I mean, how long they put up with that too. Yeah. We just saw Jimbo Fisher get fired. I mean, not that he's done great, but like Anything can happen. I mean, even these big time head coaches, teams want to win. So, um, this is kind of real quick though, too. Rutgers, by the way, like because they were saying who they're playing next week, and it's like such a tough stretch Ohio State at Iowa at Penn State. Like, oh, good God, that is absolutely horrible. Like, I've man, that's where I said, and when, when, when we talked about, you know, we were talking about like. Maryland is a good example of they struggle this time of year. It's like, well, yeah, they're in the, that's when they're deep into their schedule in the, on the, uh, in the hardest side of the division yeah. and they're playing all these hard teams, these top tier teams in the big 10. It's like, yeah, I, I see why. Yep, exactly. <laughs> well, that will do it for this episode. Um, good, good episode. We'll be back on Wednesday night for a Thursday episode. And then I'll be gone over the weekend. Yeah. I'll be down in Dallas. So we probably won't have an instant reaction. Unfortunately, Hopefully it's a win. So we'll have that one episode next week going over the game. And then obviously the Nebraska game, it's going to be a black Friday game. So 
we'll probably actually record maybe a day early, maybe on Tuesday. Yeah. Cause I'll actually, we'll be, well, we'll be going home for Thanksgiving. So yeah, we're going to have yeah. to do that. So we'll have to, that's kind of the yeah, game plan moving early. forward for the next couple of weeks. So, uh, but we will be back on Thursday going over Illinois. So until then have a good week and go Hawks. Yeah.